welcome back to my channel if you are new my name is mary and i'm so happy to have you here for today's video where we're going to be talking about all the reasons why you are capable of manifesting anything and everything that you want it seems like everywhere you turn there are all these limiting beliefs there's all these circumstances there are all these things that may be trying to convince you that you are not as capable of a manifester as you think that you are and i really want to just talk through it today and give you guys like i don't know some logical reasons some some sound reasons to back up just how powerful you are so that by the end of this video, you understand and are in complete agreement with the fact that you are the architect of your existence, you are the master manifester within your own universe, and you are capable of manifesting everything that you desire. If this is your first time finding one of my videos, Hi, my name's Mary, and I would love it if you subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. The subscribe button is right down below, and if you click the notifications bell right next to it, you'll get notified whenever I post a new video, which is at least two times a week. So let's jump right in. And this is gonna be a little bit of like, I don't know, like a lesson today, like manifesting 101. But I want to remind you that everything that exists on this planet here and now was first a thought. It first existed as a thought in someone's mind. So be it an airplane in the sky, this shirt on my back, even YouTube where this video is posted, everything that exists in your universe was once a thought in someone's mind. Someone then took that thought and used it to create. So that really goes to show you the power of a single thought thought the power like a single thought is able to snowball from this little seed within your mind to this huge oak tree we're going from acorns to oak trees and that's thoughts thoughts to things so everything that you are seeing around you all of the the cars and the carpet and the foods and the clothes and the the songs that we listen to the paintings that we see these were all first thoughts that were trapped within someone's mind that they then set free. Your thoughts are no less powerful than anyone else's. Your thoughts are just as capable of turning into these mighty oak trees, these giant things. So whether you are wanting to create a million dollar business or you're wanting to create a marriage with the person of your dreams or in my case you're manifesting a family as well as some amount of success on social media whatever it is that you are thinking of creating must turn into something there's all of this energy that must flow so with the law of assumption we learn that if we have a desire that thing is meant to be ours we are these amazingly powerful creators and our higher selves, our God selves, whatever, however you want to call it, would not allow us to have a thought, would not allow us to have a desire unless that thing was meant to be ours. We are on this planet to learn and to grow and do all these amazing things. And we wouldn't like choose to torture ourselves by having a desire that is unattainable. Like that's, it's not realistic. So again, every single thing that you are seeing around, the, the wedding ring on my hand, this lovely shade of lipstick, unicorn blood. That's the shade name. It's not actual unicorn blood. Unicorns aren't real. Or maybe they are. Can we just manifest unicorns real quick? Because I think that would be really cool. I digress. I got distracted by the unicorn blood. All of these were first thoughts in someone's head. And those people believed that their thoughts were capable of turning into the thing that they imagined them to be. And therefore they did. You are no less capable of a creator than all of those other people whose thoughts then turned into things. This is also why it's so important to kind of keep your thoughts tidy. Like you don't want to be thinking about things that are not in alignment with your desires because we don't want to plant seeds that we don't want to grow. Like I mentioned, you know, thoughts turning into things and acorns into oak trees. I don't want you focusing on things that are not in alignment with your desires. I don't want you focusing on things that are not going to serve you in this life. That kind of leads me to my next point for this topic is the importance of setting your intention. So whenever I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with my clients, I talk to them about setting their intention. I am a huge fan of The Office. Um, if you guys have ever like zoomed in on my Funko Pops in the background, whenever I record on the other side of the couch, I have a ton of pops like Funko Pops from The Office huge fan. But an analogy that I like to use 
is when you're watching The Office, there's a certain point where Michael Scott, who's the lead character, realizes that his finances are out of control and he has to declare bankruptcy. And he doesn't understand that declaring bankruptcy is this whole thing that you have to go through. He just thinks it's something that you declare. And so he walks into a room full of people, all of his fellow office mates, and he says, I declare bankruptcy because he thinks he can just speak it. And then there it is. That's very much how setting your intentions actually works. Now, I don't want you to set your intentions by walking into a room of your coworkers and saying, I intend to marry SP. No, but you're stating it to yourself. And I want you to do that either out loud or in your mind. I want you to say clearly, here are the, inth- here are the things that I intend to happen in my life. I intend to have a million dollar net worth or I intend to make a million dollars a year. I intend for SP to marry me within the next six months. I intend to get this promotion at work. I intend to have a family of four by the time I'm 40. Like whatever it is you are intending, I want you to say, this is these are my intentions. I intend for this person to be completely enamored with me. I intend to have roaring success on social media. I intend for all of my dogs to live to be 20. Here are all my intentions. I intend for this to happen. And you say it to yourself. You say it to your higher self, to your subconscious mind, to the universe, however you want to view it. Here are my intentions in my universe. And from that day forward, once you set your intentions, any thoughts that you have, which are not in alignment with those intentions, are not allowed. No more. We do not allow those thoughts to exist in our mind because our mind is the canvas that we are painting on, which creates our end state that we get to live in. So we're not going to allow any thoughts, any limiting beliefs, any negative emotions that are not in alignment with our intended end state. So whenever you hear, oh, have a strong mental diet, things like that, and people are like, what the hell does that even mean? That's exactly what that means. It means you set your intentions. Here's what I intend in my life. And anything that is not in alignment with those intentions is not allowed here. We do not allow it. And that is really how you manifest everything that you want is you set your intention for whatever it it doesn't matter what it is you set your intention for that thing and you focus on that and and we have blinders once we set our intention we have blinders on and nothing that's in the 3d is going to take our focus off of that intended end state there are no negative emotions allowed there are no limiting beliefs allowed we're not gonna dwell in these yucky no blinders on. I don't care. That's my end state. That's what I intend to happen. And then finally, I really want to focus on the divinity portion of this. So I mentioned this sometimes in other videos kind of in passing, and I really wanted to drill down on this. Let me preface this by saying I'm not Christian. I'm not Christian, but I grew up in an environment where I read the Bible many times. (laughs) So I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar with Christianity. I'm familiar with religion. I'm just one of those stereotypical Californians who is much more spiritual than religious. And here we are. So with that in mind, just if you're someone who does not believe in God or does not believe in a higher power or a creator or whatever, that's perfectly fine. This still kind of applies to you, but you don't have to agree with me 100% on what I'm about to say, but I think it's really important to say this. So in the Bible, we learned that God created the heavens and the earth. Now, there are a ton of other religions that also believe that a creator created us, but I'm going to reference the Bible because that's my point of reference. So in the Bible, we learned that God created the heavens and the earth, and it was good. And again, this goes back to what we discussed earlier, where a single thought has the ability to create. So he just has this idea, I'm going to create this. Poof, here's the heavens and the earth. And then God also created mankind. And he created mankind in his image, in his image. So God, the creator who created everything with a thought, then creates mankind in his image. And if we are created in the image of God, who's a divine creator, then we also hold within us the divinely granted gift of creation. So this sacred gift was given to us for what? Why? Why do that? So we can be happy because if you're a religious person, if you're spiritual, whatever, I believe that that God, higher power, whatever the hell is out there, I believe that our creator, 
loves us, loves us, or we're his children, right? And because he loves us, he wants us to be happy. So he's given us this gift to create the things that bring us love and joy and fulfillment. He's given us this ability to create that. He created everything that we need, the heavens and the earth and the animals and the plants and the food and the water. He gave us everything that we need and he said, here you go. Here are all the things that you need. Talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? So here's your stuff for shelter and food and water. Here are the things that you need. And I'm going to give you the gift to create everything else that you need for fulfillment. Everything else that brings you joy and enrichment and happiness. Because we were created in his image and he is a divine creator. He doesn't, he didn't go, okay, um, I'm going to give you the ability to create this thing, this thing, and this thing, but not this, this, that. No. This is limitless. So many of us will get stuck on specific things. Some people have a hard time manifesting money. Some people have a hard time manifesting health. Some people have a hard time manifesting specific persons or relationships in general and can manifest all these other things but have one or two things that just seem completely unattainable for them. And I'm here to tell you that those things are not unattainable. You have within you the divine gift of creation. This was granted to all of us to serve our own higher purpose of living these amazing, loving and happy and fulfilling lives where we bring joy to ourselves and to others. And we are not limited to this stuff, but not this. If you can manifest this, you can manifest everything else. No matter what it is, you can manifest everything else because you hold in you the divine gift of creation. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you found it helpful. This was a little bit different than my normal SP self-concept kind of stuff that I tend to focus on. So if you enjoyed this video, please show me that you enjoyed it by clicking the like button. And if you also drop a comment below telling me what your favorite part was or just give me a thumbs up or a heart emoji or whatever, I will greatly appreciate it. That will show me love for the YouTube algorithm so this channel can continue to grow and I can continue making awesome content for you guys. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye friends.